For tapes of end-time meetings, deliverance services, or Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, writes Post Office Box 21516, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Friday afternoon, September the 2nd, 1988. Labor Day weekend teaching and deliverance camp meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Gene and Erlene Moody, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, are the teachers of the afternoon. This is a deliverance service. So Brother Gene and Erlene Moody are then are going to teach this afternoon. Okay, uh, I guess maybe I'll mention that first. We have a deliverance manual, which is about 450 pages long. It's actually four books in one. It's basic deliverance, advanced deliverance, mass deliverance, and how to do deliverance. If you'd like to get a book, they're back there on the, the uh, book table, and you have to pay for those. Now, what I'm getting ready to give you now, you get for free. <laughs> uh, the Lord impressed us with these books sometimes, some years back. With, with, they're not original with us, but we've really made good use of them. And I have the curse of Ahab and the curse of Jezebel. Ahab is for men and Jezebel is for women. Now, I've got uh, a set of each. I'm going to put one on each side and pass them back that way until we run out. So all the men get Ahab and all the women get Jezebel. Give them a speech. Just take one and, and pass them on around. Now, there's a number of things we want to uh, cover here. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is have Erlene come up and just tell you some of the things that we go through to get up here. And the whole purpose of this is to help you understand the battle that we're in. So, Erlene, would you come up and uh, tell about yesterday and day before yesterday? You know, it seems like every time we're supposed to come up here, even if we haven't committed out loud verbally to come, evidently uh, Satan knows because he begins then to war against us. So yesterday, the day before yesterday, I was out running errands for Jean, and I started home. And I was going down one of the residential streets of our city, and my street had no stop sign, but the crossing streets did. And a man came up to the stop sign, and he stopped momentarily, and then he pulled directly in front of me. And I was going about 35 miles an hour, which was the speed limit there. And uh, I saw the truck, and I knew that I was not going to miss it. Have you ever been in a place like that when there is absolutely no natural or normal way for you to miss it? Amen. And yet, somehow, it passed by. And when I when we passed by each other, the man, as soon as he could, he stopped his truck, he jumped out of it, and I know he was thinking the same thing I was. How in the world, Lord? He might not have been thinking, Lord, but at least he was thinking, how did we not hit and I just had the feeling that an angel was between the two of us. Yeah, amen. And then right after that, I went to the cloth store to buy some buttons. And I turned from the button place, and there was a lady there, a very large lady in high thin in size. And across her T-shirt was written, The Sorcerer. And down beneath were a lot of other little symbols and signs and... Uh, this lady continued then to be near me throughout the store. And so what I did is I just asked the Lord. I said, Lord, I ask you to put your protection around me. I don't know the purpose for this lady being so near me so much. But I ask you to convict her, Lord, and help her and have mercy on her. And help her not to stay in this frame of mind that she's in. And uh, then I went on home. And I, I thought about this as I went home, about the protection of the Lord and how uh, we do need to be consciously aware of it. That in many times for many years, the Lord has impressed Gene and me to give thanks to God for the things that he does for us that we don't know anything about. And I know when we get there, there will be many things like that. <clears throat> Thank you, Erlene. Uh, as we were coming up here uh, yesterday, we came through a lot of different storms. It was very stormy and very dangerous. Uh, one of the ways I make my living is I investigate accidents. I'm what's called a motor vehicle accident reconstruction expert. And I can tell you, and I'm also a civil engineer, I can tell you how dangerous roadways can get. 
and it was very dangerous coming up here. And uh, after we got here, we had a, we had a good joke. Uh, they were singing about the fire. It's so early, and I had a good private joke. Uh, Satan was not able to put out the fire. We got here. <laughs> One of the things that attacks me when I come up here is my stomach. It's amazing the number of times I come up here and have stomach problems. And what we're telling you this far is to they help you to get an understanding of the battle we're in. We're in an all-out spiritual warfare, and it's a life and death battle, and it's for your life. It's for your soul, and it's for your mind. Now, the handouts we gave out, those are the Ahab Jezebel handouts. Uh, uh, I suggest that the men and women swap after they read theirs. They swap with their husband or wife uh, or parents and, and children and let them read them. Now, the uh, first I'd like to find out, how many of you, this is the first time that you have been to the Lake Hamilton Bible Camp? Raise your hand. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give them a hand. Okay, how many of you have never been exposed to mass deliverance? Raise your hand. Okay, a lot of people. How many of you have never been exposed to deliverance? Okay, quite a few. Well, <clears throat> the lessons that Earlene and I gave uh, for this particular camp meeting, if she gets an opportunity, she's going to teach about how to keep your deliverance or how to maintain your deliverance. And what I'm going to talk about today is actually four lessons in one. It's rejection, bitterness, rebellion, unforgiveness, and it's, it's really basic deliverance. So what we're trying to do, this camp meeting, is give you a foundation for deliverance. This is the foundation that the Lord has taught us. Now, <clears throat> I'd like to give you a background. And uh, here again, uh, Steve may uh, have something to say about this, but l let me tell you how we got in deliverance. Uh, we didn't get in deliverance by reading a book. We didn't get in deliverance by listening to a deliverance minister. We got in deliverance by being in trouble. And our family was in trouble for about two years. Praise God. We, early in said, we came that close to divorce. Our daughter was in rebellion, and we had a miserable household. We had a miserable household for two years. Well, <clears throat> we were full gospel Christians. We knew about salvation, baptism, Holy Spirit, healing. We didn't know about deliverance. We fasted, prayed, cried out to God, confessed positively. Uh, we did everything that the full gospel movement told us to do, that they had taught us. We were very active. Uh, people used to kid us about like being preachers without a license. We'd go around and preach at different places and witness and testify. We're real active in the full gospel. And we'd see signs and wonders and miracles happen. But see, all during this time, our family was falling apart. And there's nothing we could do about it. Well, God let us lay in our misery for two years. We went to the biggest full gospel church in town. And when it came to a Christian having a demon, nobody in town seemed to know anything about that. So we cried out to God, and God personally taught us. And I'll tell you how he did it. it to me, it was very supernatural. Early and went through, if we had a little more time, we'd tell you a little more details. But Early and went through uh, sort of a, a series of things in the living room. She eventually threw a Bible across the room. God appeared to her three different times by the raising and lowering of a shade and told her what to do, but she wouldn't do it. Finally, the last on the third time, she figured that God had told her and she'd better do it. So she came and got me out of bed. This was midnight. I was in bed. And she was up in the in the family room fussing and carrying on. And so, <laughs> so she came back and told me that God had told me to pray deliverance for her. Now, we didn't know. We were among the elite of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship, elite of the Full Gospel Churches. We didn't know about deliverance. They didn't know about deliverance. They're just as ignorant as we were. So anyway, uh, I said, so I went through the usual excuses. Well, let's go get her pastor. Let's go get brother so-and-so. And, and early says, no, God told you today. And I was true. I was the right one to do it. Husbands, you're the right one to deliver your wives. And so anyway, when I got through all my excuses, uh, I didn't know how to do it. So I said, you know, I hear I'm supposed to cast demons out of Earlene. I didn't hardly know what demons were and didn't know how to do it. So I started praying. You know, when you don't know, you start praying. <coughs> and so I prayed. <laughs> I prayed in English and I prayed in tongues. And Earlene said she thought I never would get finished praying in tongues. <laughs> and so I started. And when I quit finished praying in tongues, I started calling demons out of Earlene's demons whose names I didn't even know. 
can you see supernaturally how God worked through me, through the Holy Spirit, giving, and I didn't, and I didn't even know it, you see. It, it's almost like, it, I don't really, I can't, I can't explain it to you. Spiritually, I cannot explain it to you. But God was calling demons out of me, out of Berlin, through me, of names I didn't even know. So this went on, and uh, <clears throat> God took us through what's called basic deliverance, which is what I'm going to teach you right, right now. And, so anyway, I didn't realize what God had done until about a year later. About six months later, we ran into Frank and Ida May Hammond in Pigs in the Parlor, and we went through, uh, <clears throat> went through, we saw mass deliverance for the first time. This has been now about 13 years ago. Well, praise God. It saved their family. Amen. And to me, see, to me it's something that, <laughs> that uh, praise God. See, nobody can take this away from me. Amen. To me, the Lord taught me this. And praise God. And I'm, I'm so grateful to God. And we see through the years, this is our ministry. We've seen so many people helped. If you could just understand how rewarding this ministry is, I encourage you to get into it. If you want to see signs and wonders and, pe- and miracles, if you want to see people's lives change, praise God. So get in deliverance. Every Christian should be in deliverance. You don't need a few oddballs like Earlene and I casting out demons. All of you should be casting out demons. Signs will follow as they believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. So I encourage you. It's our ministry. Our ministry is to teach you how to do it. It's not just to cast your demons out. Now, I'm going to teach you what God taught us. And I feel that he did. And I felt like I needed to explain that to you. And I'm going to teach you. First, you get rejected. Then you become bitter. Then you rebel, and then you go on to many other things like sex sin. And the most important thing is your need to forgive others, those who've hurt you, maybe hurt you very deeply, who've wounded you, who've sinned against you. That's the most important thing that God has taught us about deliverance. <clears throat> Praise God. Okay, let's go through some scripture. Let's look at, look at rejection first. Let's look at Matthew chapter 5. Verse 3. <clears throat> I'm going to give you some scriptures that will highlight these different demonic activities that work in your life. <clears throat> Here's talking about being rejected. If you're rejected, you're poor in spirit. Matthew 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Are you poor in spirit? Well, yours is the kingdom of heaven. Are you rejected? You're poor in spirit. <clears throat> Now, let's look at verses 43 and 44. 43 and 44. You have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Well, you have to love your enemies. And as you're doing this, you won't have problems with rejection. We're going to analyze that more in depth later on. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. <clears throat> for the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Ought you not to live unto yourselves? You're to live unto others. One other verse, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 4. Here it's talking about the fathers not provoking the children. Verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Notice it didn't say mothers. Fathers have a way of provoking their children. It's very important what a father does to his children. God put him in a position of responsibility as being priest and head of the home. That's a very serious responsibility. Now, right, let's look at rejection in general. Okay, the family of rejection includes uh, self-rejection and fear of rejection. And there's a bunch of other demons that cluster around in that family. See, we look at, we look at demons as families. Demons are not just a few scattered, isolated demons. They run in families. 
Now, except for the sins of the ancestors, rejection is generally where a, first, a person first becomes demonized. And this can be in the womb. Now, I'm not going to cover the sins of the ancestors. Actually, uh, your parents are your ancestors, and they can reject you in the womb. Now, what is rejection? It's defined as reject, refuse, repudiate, decline, deny, rebuff, repel, renounce, discard, throw away, exclude, eliminate, and jettison. <clears throat> Have you had these feelings before? Rejection is very common among Christians. What is the opposite of rejection? Love. Right. <clears throat> Love is a good cure for rejection. Now, on that little tract I gave you, there's a verse. It's Isaiah 3.12. And this is a lot of the cause of the roots of rejection. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which leave thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy past. Well, are children your oppressors, parents? Do women rule your household, men? Well, if you do, your house is out of divine order. <clears throat> you have problems. Now, I'd just like to read some of the, the effects of the curse of destruction of family priesthood. The curse of destruction of the family priesthood, which is centered in the father and is usually a result of inherited family curses. Okay, father is your priest and head of the home. The authority is centered in you. This is why it's so important how you treat your wife and how you treat your children. This pays the way for the spirit of rejection in a child. As we were dealing in the men's meeting today, I could tell there were men there whose, whose fathers had not properly loved them and who were rejected and who didn't know how to love their wives and their children. It's common. <clears throat> Frustrated by his lack of leadership and her inability to respect him as a man, the woman who herself may have inherited curses of dominance begins to take over and direct the home by the Jezebel spirit. Well, women, if you're the, in charge of your home, then you're a Jezebel. The child is caught up in the conflict between the parents and becomes his chief victim. Who gets hurt the most, the men, the women, or the children? The children. The spirits in the mother will coerce the male child, forbidding him to assert his masculinity or to engage in activities which would develop him as a man. Aren't you want to raise homosexuals <laughs> or lesbians? Well, be Jezebelic Ahab parents. Men, be weak parents. Be weak uh, men. You know, let the woman do it. Women be the real strong masculine woman and take over the family and raise your homosexuals. <clears throat> the progression of destruction in the life of a female child is much the same as that of a boy, except that she will consciously or unconsciously absorb and manifest the same attitudes and spirits which drive her mother. Like father, like son. Like mother, like daughter. <clears throat> Now, I'd like to read you a pattern. There's a definite pattern to the entrance of rejection, which in turn opens the door for rebellion. One, the curse of destruction of the family priesthood, centered in the father. Two, curses and spirits of withdrawal of the father and dominance by the mother. Three, the spirit of improper discipline, usually works through the mother, either over-permissive or too harsh, may associate with a curse of rebellion against discipline on the child's part. Four, the spirit of lying to escape punishment. Five, curse and spirits of guilt. Six, curse and spirits of distrust resulting from guilt. Seven, curse and spirits involving lack of communication between parents and child. And finally, the curse and spirits of rejection. Have you ever heard this? My parents don't love me. I can't even get them to talk to me. Do your children say that to you? Now, a few comments about rejection, witchcraft control, and ugliness. We have observed that people with heavy rejection spirits, usually including rejection from the womb, sometimes are rather homely and plain. And I think that especially applies to women. A demon called ugliness is found in many persons. Perhaps you have noticed that people very often look 10 to 20 years younger in their casket than when alive. Now, the beautiful thing is we'll sit and work with people. Many times we work with them for hours. And at the end of the time, you see a different person. You, you see them change before your life. It's so beautiful. The women, they look younger. They look softer, more beautiful. The men change too. The men are more pleasant to look at. We've seen this countless times. 
All right, what happens when a person dies? His demons leaving. Okay, so the same thing can happen in life. And this is one of the things that you'll see as you work with people. You'll see wonderful changes in their life as they get rid of their demons and as they get rid of their unforgiveness and so forth. Now, I'd like to read you a few excerpts about schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a very common problem. Okay, about half your mental institutions are filled with schizophrenics. About one in eight people is a schizophrenic. So I'd say on average one in eight, that's one in eight of you, maybe. Maybe not quite that many since, since you're all Christians. Praise God. Are all of you Christians? Raise your hand if you're a Christian. Okay, praise God. The core of the schizophrenic is rejection and rebellion. Schizophrenia always begins with rejection. Now, just because you have rejection doesn't mean you're schizophrenic. The child is open for rejection by the mother's instability. Why is that? That's a good question. See, the mother is usually the main source of love for the child. So if you've got an unstable mother, you're going to tend to have an unstable child. Now, one can have the rejection spirit and not be a schizophrenic. Rejection is a controlled demon in one of the personalities set up within the schizophrenia. Now, listen to this and see if this fits you. Rejection depicts a withdrawn type of personality. It is a feeling within. It is an agony within. It is a starvation of love. It is insecurity. It's inferiority. It's fantasy. It's unreality. It's all on the inside. I don't share in this. Are you here today and you feel like you don't share in what's going on? That you're really not a part of this? That you can't enter in? That the people here really don't love you? Sexual perversions represent an extreme attempt to overcome rejection. Sex is not love. Do you realize that? Sex is not love. You may have love with sex. What's the world looking for? They go out for the one night stands. They're looking for love. They're not looking for sex. They're really looking for love. But you don't get love that way. One who feels rejected wants to feel important. What do you do to make yourself feel important? If you don't accept yourself, you're going to be out trying to do something to make people accept you, to make you feel important, to make you feel like you have self-worth. Now, I'd like to deal in the area of bitterness, and let's look at a few scriptures. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 18 through 20. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 18 through 20. It talks about the root of gall and wormwood. Okay, verse 18. Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God to go out and serve the gods of these nations. Lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it come to pass when he heareth the words of this curse that he blessed himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart to add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him. But then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smote against that man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. Okay, it's talking about the root that beareth gall and wormwood. Do you have a bitter taste in your mouth? Do you have a bitter taste in your stomach? We call that a root of bitterness. Now let's go over to the New Testament to uh, Acts. Acts chapter 8, verses 22 through 24. Acts chapter 8. Verses 22 through 24. It talks about the gall of bitterness and the bond of iniquity. Verse 22. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon thee. Are you in the bond of iniquity? Are you in the bond of sin? Romans chapter 3, 13 and 14. Romans chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Talks about cursing and bitterness. Verse 13. <clears throat> their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. All right, man, do you curse? Do you feel like you have to curse to make people <laughs> recognize you? Is your, is your English language so limited that you have to curse or cuss? Take the Lord's name in vain to get your point across? Why do you do this? Do you do this because you're rejected? All right, let's look at uh, one more verse. 
uh, two more verses. Ephesians chapter 4, 31 and 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. Talking about bitterness, wrath, anger, and clamor. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You guys, how do you identify demons? Well, many times I identify them just right out of the scripture verses. Like in here, I've come across spirits of bitterness, spirits of wrath, of anger, of clamor, of evil speakings, of malice. You can get the names of demons right out of the scripture verses. Many times we would read scripture and then call out the demons after reading the scripture. All right, let's look at one other verse. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 16. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 through 16. Here again, it's talking about the root of bitterness. Don't let the root of bitterness defile you. Verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, such as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. All right, if you're bitter, bitterness will defile you. It will defile those around you. It will defile your family. Now, let's look at bitterness in general. Okay, there's a common demon family, and in this family there's resentment, Hatred, unforgiveness, violence, temper, anger, murder, and suicide. And we'll call this out. Now, generally, after you become rejected, then you become better. Does that make sense to you? You get rejected, and then you get bitter about the situation. Uh, what is the opposite of bitterness? It's forgiveness. And it's, what is bitterness? Okay, it's bitterly cursed, rebellious, sharp, acrid, grief, and bitter, poison, Poisonous, violently, provoke, vex, grieve, sorrow, bitter herb, calamity, bile, venom, angry, shaft, most bitterly, rebel and provoke. Have you had these feelings before? They're very common among Christians. And I can say that because the people we work with are Christians. We don't cast demons out of the unsaved. And by and large, most of them are full gospel Christians, supposedly the best educated. Gall is defined as poison or bile. Bound is defined as control and uniting. Root is defined as root in thought. Wormwood is defined as curse. Those are some strong definitions. Now, I'd just like to uh, read you something about uh, bitterness. Bitterness, listen to this and see if this makes sense to you. Bitterness is a hurt that will not heal, a wound in the spirit. It, that's Proverbs 18:14. It comes into a life because of a failure to appropriate God's grace, Hebrews 12:15, by refusing to forgive others, Matthew 6:14 and 15, 7, 1 through 2, 18, 21 through 35, or refusing to thank God for all things, Ephesians 5:20 and Philippians 4:6. However, each time we remember the things which happen, we are suddenly flooded with hurt and our anger again. This indicates unhealed bitterness. Okay, as these things that have happened to you in your past, when you remember those, do you get very emotional about them? All right, if you do, that means you haven't dealt with these. Now, you don't have to forget what happened to you in the past, but when you remember it, you don't have to get emotional about it. If you get emotional about it, this means that you haven't forgiven the other person or you haven't cast your demons out or whatever. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. The Lord worked early and over the coals with that one over and over again for about three months until she finally got it. Okay? Vengeance is whose? It's God's. Do you have to get even with this person who sinned against you or hurt you deeply? No. If you do, you bring more trouble on yourself. It's too, it's too heavy for us to carry. And it belongs to God. Okay, we should forgive eagerly, eagerly remembering that unforgiveness is torture. Okay, if you're unwilling to forgive, you're torturing yourself. <clears throat> we must remember that God loves us and not to look at what others say, what we think, or even at the situation itself. Uh, women, I think, especially have this problem. They're so concerned with what other people think about them, what other people say about them. Erlene had to go through that until she finally conquered them. We must go to God of all comfort, for his Holy Spirit is our comforter, and he earnestly desires to comfort us. 
When we go to God, we will find the peace that passes understanding, which will keep us guard or garrison their hearts or minds, emotions, and thoughts. Do you have the peace of God that passes understanding? Is the world is going to hell around you, and a lot of things are happening in the Christian world. Do you have peace? Are you really at peace? Or are you all torn up? Well, you should be. You should have the peace of God that passes understanding in all this turmoil. And like Steve said, it's going to get worse. Focus on God and give him thanks, rejoicing because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, and ask for grace, comfort, and peace. We can ask the Lord for peace. I do. I ask the Lord to let me have his peace. Focusing on God and letting him be our judge is absolutely necessary. Proverbs 29.25 contrasts the fear of man with trusting God. To receive comfort and heal the bitterness in your spirit, you must die to the works of righteousness, trying to earn God's love and favor. Are you trying to earn God's love and favor? <laughs> you think you're going to make it on your own? Well, many times people do. By drowning in the ocean of God's love and grace, rejoicing that he has chosen you. I suppose that today uh, we could arrange that you wouldn't have anything except your life. We take everything away from you. We strip you back and take all your clothes, kill your husband and wife, your children. There's nothing left but you. Would you have anything to rejoice about? What would you rejoice about if we stripped you of every possession, every loved one? You'd have your salvation. Your salvation is enough to rejoice about on your death then, even if you're being martyred. Not only that, if you get martyred, you get the martyr's crown, which is the greatest crown there is. Anybody want to line up in the martyr's line? Okay, now let's look at the family of rebellion, and let's look at four different scriptures. First uh, Samuel chapter fifteen twenty three. First Samuel chapter fifteen, verse twenty three. Now what I've done is picked out scripture verses that bring out the demons in the family of rebellion. Okay, fifteen twenty three. In fact, twenty two is a real good one too. We'll just read, read both of those. And Samuel said, "Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord." Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Okay, we're looking at a spirit of rebellion, stubbornness, disobedience. How do you like that? Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. So you're rebelling against your husband. So you're rebelling against God. Doesn't sound so bad, does it? But suppose I tell you that you're practicing witchcraft. Sounds a little worse, doesn't it? Stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. Are you a stubborn person? Are you unwilling to follow the leadership of the Lord? Well, you're you're practicing self idolatry and sin. Okay, now let's look at the Hebrews two two. Hebrews chapter two, verse two. I like the way God puts this about disobedience. Hebrews chapter two. Verse 2, For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense or reward. Do you realize you'll receive a just reward for your rebellion, for your disobedience? God has an interesting way of putting it. I like, I like it where he says, uh, uh, the wonderful plague. Would you like to have a wonderful plague? Well, God can arrange it. Okay, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 17. Here's talking about submission. And the opposite of that is anti-submissiveness. Okay, Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable to you. Aren't there a lot of pastors here and men and women of God who are in full-time ministry? See, they have a responsibility for looking for out after your soul. If they don't, they'll answer to God. All right, then you have a responsibility for properly submitting to them. They are not your dictator, and you're not their slave, but you submit to them in proper godly order. As they lead you according to God, then you follow them according to God. Wives, you have a responsibility for submitting to your husbands. Now, it's, it's just like when we come up Lake Hamlet Bible Camp. Early and I, we submit to Glenn and Irma. See, they are, they're in charge of the camp. They're the leaders. We submit to them. We do what they tell us to do. 
See, we, we flow with them. We pray that, Lord, you tell them what they're supposed to tell us. And so then we just flow with them. See, it works real easy. All right, Second Peter 2.10. 2 Peter 2.10. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-will. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Okay, they're self-will. They're presumptuous. Now, let's look at rebellion in general. Our synonyms for rebellion are treason, self-will, obduracy, stubbornness, disobedience, denunciation, and anti-submissiveness. Antonyms for rebellion are willfulness, obedience, and submissiveness. Now, the rebellion family includes self-will, stubbornness, disobedience, and anti-submissiveness. Now, generally, after a person becomes bitter, then they rebel. What is disobedience? It means to disobey, to transgress, to violate, to disregard, to defy, infringe, shirk, resist, mutiny, rebel, and revolt. Revolt. Here again, have you had these feelings before? They're very common in the Christian community. And what is the opposite of rebellion? Obedience. Right. Now, the word rebellion occurs infrequently in the Bible, so we... We go to other words like rebellious and to rebel to see what God has to say about this. Rebellion is disobedience or the opposite of obedience. Now, let's take a, just take a quick study of rebellion. I'm going to summarize it for you. The best way to study rebellion as, is as disobedience to God and from the opposite view of the need to be obedient to God. There are many instances of disobedience to God and the corresponding punishment in the Bible for the sin. Now, just listen to this as I give you a list. Disobedience to God's scripture. In Leviticus, it talks about a curse to those that break the commandments. I might say, uh, I really and truly believe that there's a curse for every scripture you disobey. There's a blessing for every scripture you obey. All right, if you want to be blessed, then you obey the whole Bible. If you want to be cursed, then you disobey the whole Bible. If you want to be half blessed and half cursed, then obey about half the Bible and disobey about half of it. In Numbers, the people murmur and God threatens them. Also, Moses reproves, reproves the Reubenites and the Gadites. In Deuteronomy, God will require to the people and there is a curse for disobedience. Now, what about helpful scripture and Bible stories of rebellion? All right, in Genesis the chapter 3, it talks about the fall of man. In 2 Samuel, Absalom avenges Tamar. And also Absalom's conspiracy. In 1 Kings, it talks about the Ahab-Jezebel rebellion. In Isaiah chapter 3, it talks about children oppressed and women rule. We read that verse. That's the Ahab-Jezebel complex. In Isaiah, it talks about Satan's fall. In Ezekiel, Satan's rebellion. In Malachi, it talks about smiting the earth with a curse. In 2 Thessalonians, it talks about strong delusion and believing lies. In James, it talks about earthly, spiritual, and devilish wisdom. I might just comment that I think that we're seeing that happen in the United States today. The people don't want to follow God, so God is sending upon them strong delusion. They're believing lies, just like the government. Uh, Steve may talk about what's going on in the government. It's really, it's, there's no logical reason for what's going on at all. It's stupidity. But the men, they're blinded. They're blinded because they don't want to follow God. They want to follow themselves. They think they're smarter than God. Now, Eve rebels. Okay, I call Eve the original rebeller of man. There are many ingredients in Eve's rebellion. She was seduced by conversation and greed for power and knowledge. Women, are you seduced by conversation and greed for power and knowledge? Do you want to know as much as your man does? Do you feel like you've got to know as much as men or know more than them? The price of seduction was experienced in a knowledge of good and evil. The, act of, the action of rebellion resulted in shame, attempting to correct the mistake or cover it up, fear, withdrawing from God's presence, loss of esteem position, pain in childbirth, hard work and toil, and birth of rebellious children. How's that for heritage from uh, Eve? Now, really, Adam wasn't any better. In fact, he was really worse. What did he do? He went along with Eve, and so together they cursed mankind. All right, you know about the story of Absalom. I'm just going to go into uh, uh, summarize that. Okay, Absalom had a uh, sister who was raped by his half-brother. And this set into to, uh, a chain of events where he eventually killed his half-brother. 
What about Jezebel? You know about Queen Jezebel? <laughs> she was a very wicked woman. Came from a very wicked father. And she married who? Ahab. King Ahab. All right. He was, he was not any prize himself. He was the worst king up to that point in time. And that's where we get the curse of Ahab and Jezebel. Now, what are classic examples of rebellion? All right, the nation of Israel rebelled many times. You can just go through the Bible and just see the rise and fall. I don't know how many times they rose and fall. It seems to me like it's about seven times. But the rise and fall of Israel, they, they, they fall and they cry to God and God uh, blesses them. They rise and they get fat, happy, and dumb, and then they fall again. Back and forth they go. All right, how about Satan and the fallen angels? That was the original rebellion. Queen Jezebel was a rebellious woman, and King Ahab was a rebellious man. All right, what, is, what are Jezebel, Ahab, rebellious influences in the world today? All right, you see, just think about this. You'll see it on television. In fact, television promotes these things. If you're a television addict, then you're being indoctrinated into the ways of the world, into the ways of humanism to lead you down the primrose path to hell. Divorce and one-parent families. You're seeing more and more one-parent families. Feelingism pictures bungling father and clever mother. On television, the woman is so smart and the man is so dumb. Sex, no restriction. Have sex any way you want to. Men, women, boys, girls, young, old, animals. Just take it any way you want to. It's all right. The young people. And I speak to you young people. You're confused. You're rebellious. Your parents haven't taught you. How about drugs, sex, and music? A society with emotional problems. A feminine, emotional, weak, spiritual, and weak, physical man. You fall in this category, men? Are you an Ahab, weak man? You don't have to be. And God will hold you responsible for being that way, too. You can't just blame it on your wife. Well, my wife was a Jezebel. She wouldn't let me do these things. <laughs> Sorry, man, that's no excuse. Okay, women's false strength. Strength, put to a test, usually fails. These women tell you they're so strong. And then they get into a bind, and they just, they just explode. They just fall apart. The children, they have fear, insecurity, frustration, difficulty of learning, potential corruption, discord, growth in a cult and cult, selfishness, doubt, inability to achieve, hypochondriacs, and church splits. These are some of the things that come out of these relationships. Okay, now let me just summarize the rebellion. A study of the Bible shows clearly that God hates rebellion, and he will punish the people for their sins. The people are blessed when they obey the Bible, and they're cursed when they disobey the Bible commandments. All rebellion is against God. Do you realize that, women? When you rebel against your husband, who God put in authority over you, you're rebelling against God. That's something the Lord showed early. For example, when a wife rebels against her husband, she is not just rebelling against him, but against God, who put the husband in authority over the wife. Finally, rebellion can be very costly, while obedience can be very rewarding. The Bible applies equally to an individual, family, church, community, nation, and so forth. And it's very interesting to me to watch the rebellion in the United States and to watch us fall from being a power and uh, watch us fall in so many different areas. It's really, um, it's really sad. Now, I'm going to teach you the most important lesson of all. It's called unforgiveness. And this is the most important thing that God has taught us about deliverance. The detriment of unforgiveness and the value of forgiveness. And let's look at some scripture. Uh, Psalm 103, 3 and 12. Psalm 103, verses 3 and 12. 103, 3. Who forgiveth thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. <clears throat> In verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Okay, that's God. God has forgiven us. He's put our transgression as far as the east is from the west. Now, Matthew 5:44. Uh, okay, <clears throat> we read that one. I'm going to read it again out of my notes here. You can turn to it if you like. In fact, let's just go ahead and, and analyze that verse right there. Matthew 5:44. <clears throat> <clears throat> you, Erling, would you get me a glass of water? But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully usually and persecute you. Now, do you... Uh, realize there are no excuses in the Bible. There are no excuses for your bad behavior. <laughs> okay, so you have to forgive your enemies. No matter what they did to you. No matter how bad it was. You have no choice. Well, you do have a choice, really. You know, God will let you perish in your sin. 
He'll let you stay in your misery. He'll let you go to hell. He'll let you live a miserable life here on earth. But as a Christian, you really don't have any choice. Okay, let's analyze that. Love your enemies. Now, do you have to love Satan? So you supposed to love Satan, love demons, love sin and iniquity, love evil? No. Do you have every right to hate everything that God hates? I hate Satan. I hate all demons. I hate all sin and iniquity. I hate everything that God hates. All right, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to love in a social or a moral sense. We love him. We love our enemy. Who's their enemy? He's your adversary. He's your foe. Number two. Thank you, Erling. Number two. Bless them that curse you. Speak well of. Thank or invoke a benediction upon. Curse means to execrate or to doom. So this person is trying to doom you. And all the time you're blessing him. Do good to them that hate you. Do good honestly, full well. Hate is to detest, to especially to persecute. So you got these people out there who are persecuting the Christians. Some unto death. That's an amazing figure. A thousand Christians dying a day. Is that a day? A thousand Christians in a day? That's amazing. And I, personally, I feel that things are going to get worse and worse and we're going to see Christians killed in the United States. And I think those... I would... I don't like to say this. But I feel like early and I are prime targets to get killed because of our, our Christian stand. We're not in the closet. We're not a, a closet Christian. We're, we're among the most hated of Satan's enemies. <laughs> so I think early and I are a target to get killed by those who eventually will be killing Christians in the United States as things get worse. Now, I don't look forward to dying, but if it's my time, then so be it. Okay, pray for them that despitefully use you or persecute you. Pray earnestly for, supplicate. Despitefully is to insult, to slander, and to falsely accuse. Persecute is to pursue, to suffer. So, you love your enemies, you bless them that curse you, you do good to them that hate you, you pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. This helps, this helps you not to have unforgiveness. It's pretty hard to be praying for somebody, <laughs> praying for God to bless somebody and be hating them at the same time. Now, let's look at unforgiveness in general. Okay, generally, a person's demons can't be cast out if they have unforgiveness. If you're sitting there with unforgiveness and you want to keep your unforgiveness, it's very difficult for us to cast your demons out. And what is the opposite of unforgiveness? Forgiveness, right. Okay, now let's look at Matthew 18, 21 through 35. This is a key chapter. This is the law of forgiveness. And I think you can clearly see that God sends demons to torment those who have unforgiveness. <clears throat> I never forget when we started teaching this in the greater Baton Rouge area, we had people in the church that came against us. They didn't like this. In fact, you may not like it either. In fact, you may not like many things that I say. <laughs> but does that really matter whether you like it or not? Does it really matter whether you like me or not? No. If God said it, uh, you better give due heed to it. <laughs> not because Gene said it. You know, not because Gene has got the courage to get up here and tell you this. No, because God said it. Okay, Matthew chapter 18, 21 through 35. Okay, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. All right, how many is seventy times seven? Right. You think you ought to stop there? Suppose God would only forgive you for 490 sins. Where would you be? Well, we'd be in serious trouble. No telling how many sins we commit every day, even the best of us who are really trying not to sin. The Bible is very tough. The Bible is a very tough book to follow. See, in the Old Testament, you didn't do it. You didn't commit the act. In the New Testament, you don't even think it. All right, the kingdom of heaven is likened to... Okay, the king is God. Are right, you the rich man. The poor man is that person that you won't forget. Now let's look at let's look at the story here, verse uh, twenty-three. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, that's God, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. That's the rich man. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. 
But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. That's the poor man. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So he wouldn't forgive him. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto the Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors, tormentors of the demons, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father, who's that? The heavenly Father, that's Almighty God, do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother trespassing. God will do that to you. So likewise shall my your heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. So God will do it to you. Would God do anything bad to you? He'll send demons to torment you if you're unwilling to forgive. Now let's let's break this down a little further. I like numbers. Okay, a talent is 750 ounces of silver. A pence was one-eighth of an ounce of silver. 10,000 talents times 750 was 7,500,000 ounces of silver. Or one time I calculated that to be $52,800,000. A hundred pence times an eighth was two and a half ounces, which calculated out as $44. The ratio would be like one dollar to 600,000, or 600,000 times as much. Okay, so God forgave the rich man 600,000 times as much as the rich man was willing to forgive the poor man. All right, the tormentors are Satan and his demons. The prison is then in jail with Satan as a warden and his demons as guard. Now, this is the crucifixion of the flesh until you come to your senses, forgive your fellow man, and then ask God to forgive you. The consequence of unforgiveness is the most important lesson that God has taught us about deliverance. And I can, I can give you an analogy. Think of the analogy of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, coming down and dying on the cross for you. Think about him paying for all of your sins. He freely paid for all of your sins, past, present, and future. Okay, so then you come along, and this person hurts you or sins against you, and you won't forgive him. Now, what's the comparison? Do you think the person that hurts you is anywhere near the comparison of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for you? No. God's trying to get it across 600,000 times to one. Let me put it in graphic terms. So this man comes along and rapes you. That's one buck. Jesus Christ dying on the cross. That's $600,000. You won't forgive that man? God won't forgive you. Or man, let's say something happens to you. Very serious. Maybe somebody shoots you or something. Seriously wounds you. Destroys one of your organs. That's one dollar. See, no matter what man can do to us, even killing us, no matter what man can do to us, that is no comparison is what Jesus Christ did for us. Therefore, God holds you responsible for, for, for forgiving others. <laughs> And if you don't, he'll send the demons to torment you. So you can take your pick. <laughs> now, generally, cancer and arthritis come in through the sin of forgiveness. If you know a Christian with these diseases, see if they have unforgiveness. They cannot be healed if the demons have a right to be there. Have you seen these people? They, they have cancer, arthritis. They're constantly in the prayer lines. And they, everybody who comes through town, they go to get prayed for, but they never get healed. You ever wondered about that? Well, they may very well have unforgiveness. The demons may very well have a right to be there. Now, what is a pattern for being delivered and healed? You forgive others, you ask God for forgiveness, and you forgive yourself. You cast out unforgiveness and bitterness, you cast out cancer and arthritis, you know with all, and pray for healing. Right, many people, I see it up here uh, probably every time we come up, they, they, have, they can't forgive themselves. They don't want to forgive themselves. They don't think they have a right to forgive themselves. You have to forgive yourself. You can't hold on forget. No matter how, I mean, I'm, we all make mistakes. We make terrible mistakes. But you cannot hold this against yourself. You can't go around with being unwilling to forgive yourself. Now, I'd just like to read this, and this will finish up the lesson. This is about forgiveness, to help you to understand forgiveness. 
Forgiveness is hard to give because it hurts to extend it to undeserving and hard-hearted ones. To release a wrongdoer instead of exacting a just penalty requires that we reach out in love, rejecting the temptation to hold bitterness and resentment. This is contrary to our natural inclinations, thus the old adage, to err is human, to forgive divine. Forgiveness is not forgetting the wrong done. Some hurts are so deep that this would be impossible. I hear preachers say, you've got to forget all this. No, you don't have to forget what happened to you, but you have to forgive. You have to release that other person. The Bible tells you you can release another person from their sin. You can hold them in their sin or you can release them. So if you have to release them, you have to forgive them. You have to ask God to forgive them and you can go on. We can forget the anger and hurt we felt, but the act is branded in our minds. Forgiveness takes place when the victim accepts the loss and or injury done him and deliberately cancels the debt owed him by the offending person. Anger must be dealt with openly and honestly, not denied or ignored. Either it must be vented in retaliation or the injured party must accept his own anger, bear the burden of it, and confess it in prayer to release himself and to set the other party free. Revenge always hurts the revenger far more than the one at whom it's level. In other words, our pattern must be the grievous and substitutionary death of Christ. He willingly received all the hurt and evil of the entire human race in his own body on the tree to pay the debt for our guilt. He now offers what he has wrought as a free gift to undeserving and guilty persons so that they can be free. As nothing else will, forgiveness takes us into the mysteries of grace where God forgives unconditionally on the basis of the substitutionary payment by another. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit's work in a life is a quality of meekness. There is a quality which is nurtured and abetted by practicing forgiveness. And meekness is not being sissy. Jesus was a meek person and he was not a sissy. You can be a meek man and not be a sissy. You can be teachable. This is a highly prized quality which will cause us to be able to accept God's dealings with us as good without disputing or resisting them. Meekness will also cause us to be able to bear one another's burden cheerfully and for Jesus' sake, enabling us to enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings. Because unforgiveness and the resentment and bitterness it generates is so deadly, it is not optional but necessary that it be dealt with. So as a Christian, you have to deal with this. If you don't, you'll pay a severe price. You'll pay a severe price mentally and physically. You may even pay with death. Cancer and arthritis spirits definitely root into this fertile ground. To be bitter and unforgiving costs far more than this word. Now, I've tried to give you an overview of what uh, the Lord has taught us. You get rejected, you become bitter, and you rebel. Then you go into many other things. The most important thing is to forgive. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to forgive. And I hope I have uh, said enough that you can understand this. If you don't understand any other teaching that Early and I do up here, if you can just understand this one, that's, that's the most important one. We've taught up here many times on many different subjects. Deliverance ranges far and wide. But if you can understand what I taught you today, and if you can put this into practice, I mean, it will be the most important thing that we could have done for you. Now, we're going to uh, go through some mass deliverance. And I think probably I need to, to give you a few clues about this. All right, how do you go through mass deliverance? Many of you have not been through mass deliverance, and many of you have. What you do is you just relax. And we, we, we crack a little joke. We say, uh, I say, trust me, I haven't lost a patient yet in 13 years. <laughs> okay, we won't lose you. If the demons take over, uh, we'll, we'll get you back. Don't worry. Okay, so just relax. Just relax and trust me and trust the Holy Spirit. Now, don't put on any act. You don't have to fake deliverance. You don't have to do anything. You're just natural. If the demons come out, just let them come out. They, you may want to cough or blow your nose or, or whatever. The demons may talk through you. Okay, just relax. Just let them. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. No, don't fake it as if you're going to get deliverance. And don't hold back to prevent uh, someone from seeing you. Uh, the, God is very clear. He wants you to get rid of your demons. It's no shame to get rid of demons. It's a shame to keep the demons. 
So, if you, if you make a spectacle out of yourself, so what? You see? Nothing lost. The key thing is to get rid of the demons. All right, if you, if you have so much pride that you're unwilling to let your demons go, I guarantee you, you can keep them. <laughs> I can't do anything about it. If you want to keep your demons, I can't do anything about it. Okay, if you want to cooperate with me, we can get rid of the demons. Now, when the, the demons come out, their pneuma, their air, their spirit, they generally come out through the openings within your body, an exhaling of breath, coughing, yawning. Sometimes they bring their nest out. Sometimes phlegm comes up, and I call that the nest. That's where the demons live. That's their houses. They're bringing out their houses. Okay, we got paper towels. we got workers. The workers will circulate around you quietly. They'll help you. They'll lay hands on you. They'll pray for you and so forth. Now, don't pray. Don't pray in tongues. Don't chant. Don't say, Jesus, 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 or something like that. No. Just leave the passages open. See, we're not asking for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We're asking for demons to leave. So just relax and just let the demons leave. Okay, and it'll probably be a very easy experience. Okay, I'd like for you all to stand up. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a few minutes in silent prayer. And as the Holy Spirit convicts you, I want you to forgive those people that you've held unforgiveness against. And like I've taught you, you have absolutely no right before God to have unforgiveness. Now, especially forgive your loved ones who've hurt you. Your husband, your wife, your children, your parents, your pastor, your Christian brothers and sisters. These are the people who are most likely to hurt you, and it's most likely to be the deepest. Okay, I want you to forgive those, and I'm going to take you through some uh, prayers uh, out loud. So just spend a few minutes letting the Holy Spirit deal with you. Just pray silently. All right, pray out loud after me. Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive my ancestors and my descendants and anyone else who has hurt me or sinned against me. I ask that you forgive them and bless them with all spiritual blessings. Forgive me, Lord Jesus, for my many sins. I forgive myself for sins against my body. Now I break every curse, every hex, every demonic tie that binds. I break every soul tie brought about by witchcraft or sexual impurity. Lord Jesus, stir up the demons within my subconscious mind, command them to manifest, identify and reveal themselves as unto Jesus, so that they can be cast down. In all these things, I ask in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Master, and my Savior. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. Okay, let me pray. Satan, we come against you. We come against all powers, principalities, evil forces in this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. We come against all demons inside or outside of anyone present over this city, state, nation, world. We loose the power of God. Warring angels, ministering angels, the Holy Spirit, the sevenfold Spirit of God to come down and do a mighty work on earth today. We bind up every force of evil and we loose every force of good. We have the power and authority to do so in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we come against these demons by the power and authority of Jesus Christ, by the word of God in the name of Jesus, by the authority of the believers in the unity of our spirits. We command these demons to line up in rank and file and order and come out quickly. We bind every power that they have. We loose ourselves from them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, we just ask you to loose legions of angels, warring angels, ministering angels, the Holy Spirit, the sevenfold Spirit of God, to come down and do a mighty work here today, Father. Lord, I ask you to remove every loose demon from the air around us and cut off all communication of the demons outside to the demons inside. And Lord, we're just careful to give you all the glory, honor, praise, and credit for everything is said and done. And all these things we ask in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Master, and our Savior. And we take authority over Satan according to the holy word of God. 
in the whole word of God, the complete, whole, holy word of God. We believe it. We accept it in simple, childlike faith. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command the spirits of rejection to come out. Now, come out of the people right now. Spirits of rejection, fear of rejection, inability to give and receive love, prenatal rejection, conception and lust, rejection by the mother, rejection by the father, by brothers and sisters. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Now, come out of them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. All these spirits of rejection. Now, loose them and set them free in the name of Jesus Christ. And I remind you, evil spirits, that you're going to be cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the worm shall never die and the fire shall never be quenched. You'll be cast in there with your master, Satan. You'll be in total loneliness and total despair, and you have very little time left. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Come out of the people. I loose the spirits of love upon these people in Jesus' name. The spirits of love, I loose them upon the people in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, let them... Let them see how much you love them. Show them by your Holy Spirit, Father, how much that you love them. Now, come out, spirits of rejection, conception and lust. I call out conception and lust. Come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call out the spirit of the bastard. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of the bastard. I command you to go in Jesus' name. All rejection. Now, loose them and set them free in the name of Jesus Christ. I want all that rejection. Behold. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Signs will follow as they believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. Now come out right now. Line up in rank and file and order and come out quickly. All those spirits of rejection. We are not rejected, we're loved. That's right. Now come out right now. We love each other and God loves us and our, our family loves us. Now come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. All this rejection. <laughs> All these hurts and deep hurts and scars and nests, I command you to go in Jesus' name. I come out. All hurts and deep hurts, scars and nests, I command you to go in Jesus' name. I come out. Roots, memories, scar nests, and habits, ruler demons, and lesser demons, go in the name of Jesus Christ. All these common demon families, I command you to go. And I come out right now. Loose them and set them free in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. All this rejection, you must go in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, come out, spirits of bitterness, ruler of bitterness, root of bitterness, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Now, go. The family of bitterness, I command you to go in Jesus' name. I stir you up and I drive you out in the name of Jesus Christ. I want all the bitterness to go. That's right, all the bitterness, the whole family of bitterness. Come out, spirits of resentment, hatred, unforgiveness, I command you to go. Come out, resentment, hatred, and unforgiveness. And it reminds you, demons, that we have forgiven those who've hurt us. Now, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no right to be there. You have no right to remain. You will come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, loose them and set them free. Every spirit of unforgiveness, I command you to go in Jesus' name. All unforgiveness. We've released everyone from our, the sins that they have committed against us, and I command you to go in Jesus' name. You must go. You have no choice. You will go in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, come out, spirits of violence, temper, anger, and retaliation. We command you to go in Jesus' name. Come out. Violence, temper, anger, and retaliation. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Let not the sun set on your anger and give place to the devil. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Right now, loose them and set them free in the name of Jesus Christ. All these evil spirits. Violence, temper, anger, and retaliation. I command you to go. Come on out. Up and out of them. Line up and rank and file in order and come out quickly. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Now, come out every spirit of murder, suicide, death, abortion. Agreement with abortion. Death and fear of death. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. All those killer spirits, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Come out. All these killer spirits. Death, suicide, abortion. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Agreement with abortion. Death and fear of death. Come out in Jesus' name. Come on. Up and out of them right now in the name of Jesus Christ. All fears. Fears of all types. Come out. Fears of all types and phobias of all types. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Now go. Come out. Death. Death, come out. Death and fear of death. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Death and fear of death. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Death and fear of death. Suicide. Uh, death wish. Come out. The spirit of death wish. I call you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. The death wish. Suicide. Murder. Abortion. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. The killer spirits. The desire to kill somebody or to maim them or so forth. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Come out. I want all these evil spirits to go. Murder, suicide, death, abortion, death and fear of death, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, the whole bitterness clan. Roots, memories, scarness, and habits, ruler demons, and lesser demons, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Now, come out then. 
Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I demand a complete cleansing in the area of bitterness. You will go in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, come out. Every spirit of rebellion. Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Come out. Spirits of rebellion. Spirits of witchcraft. They come in through rebellion. I command you to go. I break the ties between rebellion and witchcraft. I command those spirits to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Spirits of rebellion. Spirits of witchcraft. Come out in Jesus' name. Go right now. All rebellion. All witchcraft. Rebellion of the wife against the husband. Rebellion of the husband against God. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. All rebellion. Now, loose them and set them free in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of rebellion. Come out, spirits of self-will, selfishness, self-idolatry. Come out. All these self-will demons. I'll do it my way. No, thank you, God. Come out, spirits of selfishness, self-idolatry. All those eye demons, those self-demons. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Loose them and set them free right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of self-will, selfishness, self-idolatry. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, every spirit of stubbornness. Stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Come out, spirits of stubbornness. All spirits of stubbornness, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Come out, spirits of disobedience. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of disobedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I command you to go in Jesus' name. I come out, spirits of disobedience. Disobedience against the parents. Disobedience against God. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. All spirits of disobedience, go in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Loose them and set them free in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Every spirit of uh, anti-submissiveness, I command you to go. Unwilling to submit the wife to the husband, the husband to God. Come out. Anti-submissiveness, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Come out. All rebellion, self-will, stubbornness, disobedience, anti-submissiveness, I command you to go in Jesus' name. And I demand a complete cleansing in the area of basic deliverance, rejection, bitterness, and rebellion. I command you to line up in rank and file in order and come out quickly. I demand all these spirits to go. Every spirit that we've taken away your legal right, I command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. And I loose the opposite spirits upon the people in Jesus' name. Now go right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We command you to go. We bind your power and drive you out in Jesus' name. <clears throat> okay, come out, spirits of strife, contention. <clears throat> Go in the name of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. Come out. Spirits of strife, contention, spirits of accusation. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Spirits of judging, criticism, fault finding. Come out of the men and out of the women. Come out. These judgmental spirits. I call out those judgmental spirits in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Go. Those judgmental spirits. Those spirits of gossip. Gossip and backbiting and criticism and judgmentalism. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Now go. All these accusation spirits, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. All these demons that come in through rejection, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Now go right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Come out. All the insecurity demons, come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The spirits of insecurity, inferiority, self-pity, loneliness, timidity, shyness, inadequacy, ineptness. All insecurity that comes in through rejection, come out. All insecurity, come out. Insecurity and inferiority, I command you to go in Jesus' name. I come out of the people. Insecurity and inferiority, go in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, all those passivity demons. That's right. Spirits of passivity in the men. The Ahab back passivity in the men. Passivity in the women. Just stand back and let somebody else do it. Come out, all funk, indifference, listlessness, lethargy. Come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. All passivity, <laughs> passive mind. That's right. Come out. The spirits of double-mindedness. I call it the spirits of double-mindedness. Come out. Right now. Double-mindedness. Toss to and fro. Passivity. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. The devil's deeds. I call out the devil's deeds in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out right now. Uh, ruler of the depression. I call out the ruler of depression. Come out of the people right now in the name of Jesus Christ. All depression. Come out. Spirits of despair, despondency, discouragement. Defeatism, dejection, hopelessness, suicide, death, morbidity. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. All spirits of depression, we command you to go. The devil's deeds, come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Loose them and set them free in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. All argument, quarreling, and fighting, and strife. Come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. The habit of arguing. Arguing just to be heard and so forth. Come out right now. Arguing in church, we command you to go in Jesus' name. Strife in churches. Come out right now. Spirits of strife. I call out the spirits of control. Come out. The Ahab-Jezebel complex. Spirits of Ahab. Spirits of Jezebel. Come out. Come out. Spirits of domination, manipulation, control, possessiveness, 
witchcraft. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out all those weak, effeminate uh, spirits that are in men. I command those to go in Jesus' name. Come out the control spirits. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out all retaliation. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Destruction, spite, hatred, sadism, hurt, cruelty. In the name of Jesus Christ. Especially come out of the men who retaliate against their wives and their children. Come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. All retaliation. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Sensitiveness, self-awareness, fear of man, and fear of disapproval. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. All these fears, uh, all these sensitiveness fears, I command you to go in Jesus' name. Now, come out in right now. This uh, super sensitiveness. That's right. In, in, inability to take criticism, constructive criticism. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Come out. All persecution. Unfairness, fear of judgment, fear of condemnation, fear of accusation, fear of reproof, sensitiveness. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out, all persecution demons. You got a persecution complex. Everybody persecutes you. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Right now, all fear of others. I call out all fear of others in the name of Jesus Christ. Now go. Fear of others. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Now come out, all the mental illness demons. Come out, spirits of mental illness. Insanity, madness, mania, mental retardation, senility, schizophrenia, paranoia, and hallucinations. Come out. Spirits of hallucinations, false dreams, nightmares, uh, false visions. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Panic in the night. I call you out in Jesus' name. All paranoia, panic fear, excessive fear. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. All paranoia and excessive fear. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Now, come out to schizophrenia. Come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirits of schizophrenia. Split personality, double personality, the other personality. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Go. Go right now. To come out of the elderly people. I call out senility and premature senility and premature aging. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Those demons that have got the people old before their time. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Now, come out. All mental retardation, mental retardation in children. They can't learn. They can't remember. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Spirits of uh, mental retardation, madness, mania, insanity, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, all paranoia. Demons are coming through paranoia, jealousy, envy, suspicion, distrust, persecution, fears, and confrontation. Come out. Come out, excessive fears. I call you out in the name of Jesus Christ. All paranoia and excessive fears, fear in the night and so forth. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear of losing your job. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. All confusion. Mind binding, mind blanking, mind confusion, mind occult. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. All frustration, incoherence, forgetfulness. Come out. Every spirit of doubt, unbelief, skepticism. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Doubt, unbelief, skepticism. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Doubt, uh, lack of faith in God, lack of trust in God, doubt in God, inability to, to trust God. Come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, all jealousy, the green-eyed monsters. We call you out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, jealousy, envy, suspicion, distrust, selfishness. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out, all you green-eyed monsters. It causes us so much trouble. Come out, all envy and jealousy, suspicion of her wife or husband, distrust of her wife or husband, selfishness. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out, all the withdrawal spirits. We'll just withdraw from this world. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out, every spirit of pouting, daydreaming, fantasy, pretension, unreality. Come out, spiritual fantasy. I call out all spiritual fantasy and religious fantasy. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Go all withdrawal, all escapism. Come out, all escapism, indifference, stoicism, passivity, sleepiness, alcohol, drugs, everything we do to escape the reality of the world. Come out, all passivity, all escapism. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out, those demons that drive us to perfection. Pride, vanity, ego, frustration, criticism, irritability, intolerance, anger. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Go all the competition demons that drive us. Driving, argument, pride, ego. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Com competition with other Christians. We command you to go in Jesus' name. Come out. Every spirit of impatience, agitation, frustration, intolerance, resentment, criticism. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. All false burden. False responsibility, false companion. Come out, all the false gifts. Satan has a false gift for every true gift that God has. Come out, spirits of false tongues, false prophecy, false teaching, false preaching, false signs and wonders and miracles. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. All false gifts. We command you to go in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the end of this message. Our website is www 
lakehamiltonbiblechamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.